Once again, the James Webb Space Telescope has achieved a significant feat, capturing images of primordial galaxies that illuminated the early universe. The early galaxies, like the ones identified by Webb, were abundant with luminous gas, possessing such brilliance that the gas itself could surpass the emerging stars in brightness. These recent discoveries provide insights into the prevalence of these radiant, gas-rich galaxies when the universe was just around 2 billion years old, despite its current age of 13.8 billion years. Current observations indicate that nearly 90% of these galaxies showcased what are termed extreme emission features, signifying the presence of abundant glowing gas. And while studying these early galaxies, astronomers stumbled upon the most distant example of a galaxy in the universe that looks like our home galaxy, the Milky Way. Yes, you heard that right. When the universe was just 2 billion years old, the newfound spiral galaxy, Sears 2112, appears to have featured a bar of stars and gas cutting across its heart. But wait a minute, how is that even possible? Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is also a spiral galaxy sporting a similar bar. Scientists suspect the Milky Way's bar rotates cylindrically, funneling gas into the galaxy's center and sparking bursts of star formation. Astronomers previously thought this galactic structure marks the end of a galaxy's formative years, so it was expected to be seen only in old galaxies that may have reached full maturity, perhaps those that existed halfway through the evolution of the universe. And with the Hubble Space Telescope's past observations of galaxy morphologies, we thought the early universe hosted very few barred galaxies. However, everything that we know about the early universe is changing. The new findings gathered from data by the Webb Telescope conclude that it may not be necessarily true that barred spirals must have existed only recently in the universe. The discovery of spiral galaxies, Sears 2112, reveals galaxies that resemble our own already existed almost 12 billion years ago when the universe was just 15% of its current age. Yes, Sears 2112 is observed at a redshift of 3 when the universe was 2100 million years old. Essentially, this means the light from the galaxy took almost 12 billion years to reach the James Webb Space Telescope. This is a surprising find, as galactic bars seen in the galaxy are thought to have manifested about 4 billion years into the birth of the universe. The standard model of cosmology predicts that the early universe's physical conditions must have prevented the formation of such barred galaxies in general. But here we are. Not only that, even theoretical predictions from cosmological simulations really struggle to reproduce such systems at those epochs. So what is going on? We now need to understand which key physical ingredient is missing in our models. If something is missing, said one of the scientists associated with the discovery. Now, if you think this is it, here's the crazy part. Scientists believe that 85% of all matter in the universe is dark matter, a mysterious substance elusive to observations because it doesn't interact with light at all. Dark matter is thought to have radically influenced galaxy evolution and star formation after the Big Bang. Findings from the new discovery, however, show galaxy evolution, at least in the case of Sears 2112, was dominated by ordinary matter and not dark matter when the universe was about 2 billion years old. Yes, it's a big discovery, and it confirms that the evolution of this galaxy was dominated by baryons. The ordinary matter, you and I and everything we see, are made of, and not by dark matter despite its overabundance. Well, that's new, and while we are talking about new discoveries, here's one more. Two NASA space telescopes teamed up to scrutinize a distant galaxy and discovered something mind-boggling, a gargantuan black hole inside a galaxy that's more than 13 billion years old. The supermassive object hailed as the oldest black hole yet confirmed has roughly the same mass as all the stars in that galaxy combined. 
In a galaxy called UHZ-1, astronomers have spotted the telltale signature of a growing black hole, a mere 470 million years following the Big Bang. The discovery may help solve a cosmic mystery about supermassive black holes, which appear to have taken up residence in baby galaxies in the earliest era of the universe, not long after the Big Bang. Black holes come in two varieties, stellar mass and supermassive. This is fairly self-explanatory. The stellar mass black holes might be roughly 10 to 100 times the mass of our Sun. A supermassive black hole a term without an ounce of hype can be many millions or even billions of times heftier. The residency of such monstrous black holes in the cores of virtually all galaxies, including our own, has fascinated astrophysicists, in part because their origin is unclear. The new report can't fully resolve the issue, but it makes a strong case that at least for UHZ-1, the supermassive black hole didn't grow gradually but rather was supermassive from the get-go. The report leveraged data from both the Chandra X-ray Observatory and the James Webb Space Telescope. This is cosmic archaeology, using ancient light in the X-ray and infrared portions of the spectrum. The light from UHZ-1 was emitted 13.2 billion years ago, about 400 million years after the Big Bang. The observations, according to the new paper, show that the supermassive black hole at its core has roughly the same mass as the entire galaxy, which is absolutely crazy. The supermassive black hole in UHZ-1 is fascinating not just for its mass, but because it is the first instance of what scientists at Yale University call an outside black hole. They theorized that such a black hole could develop from a collapse of a huge cloud of gas and now there is evidence for the hypothesis. This discovery is just the latest in what is sure to be a very long list of groundbreaking research concerning the early universe that Webb is delivering and will continue to do so. Now that the telescope has begun doing science operations with Hubble, Chandra and other observatories, we are sure to find many more fascinating things about our universe. The telescope is also collaborating with TESS, the transiting exoplanet survey satellite, the successor to Kepler, and it is catching up big time. New research announces eight more TESS candidates. Yes, you heard it right, and they're all super-Earths. TESS's planet hunting methods are more refined than Kepler, as it was specifically built to detect exoplanets transiting in front of bright stars in Earth's neighborhood. Using TESS's data, along with ground-based telescope data and high-resolution imaging, scientists found eight potential super-Earth. Not only that, they've also identified that six out of the eight planets are excellent candidates for habitability as they fall within the star's habitable zone. But a star's powerful radiation, especially in X-ray and UV emissions, can strip away a planet's atmosphere over time, regardless of it being in the habitable zone. This is where the concept of cosmic shoreline comes into being. The cosmic shoreline is a dividing line between planets that have retained their atmospheres and planets that have lost them due to exuvial radiation from their stars. The scientists, however, went ahead and simulated the atmospheres of the eight super-Earths to see what the James Webb Telescope is likely to find when it examines their atmospheres. The results are intriguing, showing signs of carbon dioxide, water, and most intriguingly, methane. Methane can be a biosignature, though there's a lot of uncertainty. Finding it in any exoplanet atmosphere will help scientists understand its presence more fully, whether it's an actual biosignature or not. However, real observations of the validated planets using the Webb telescope are required to confirm the transmission spectral analysis. Well, let's keep all our fingers crossed. What do you all think? Remember to subscribe to Cosmos Prodigy.